MCs wasn't really as popular as the DJ. It was like, if you remember, Grandmaster Flash and the Fury is fun, you know what I'm saying? The DJ always came first, you know? And that was my thing. It's like, I wasn't an upfront, outward person. I didn't MC, you know what I'm saying? So DJing was a way to be quiet, but still be known and your presence be felt. It's something I, I'm just like into. I love music. So what's the best thing to do but become a DJ? And I was a little kid DJing. So I had to contend with a lot of big guys, you know what I'm saying? So I'm DJing for a while, man. It's like, it's still my first love. Producing is cool, pays the rent, but DJing is like my thing. This art form has employed so many people, you know? So it's like, uh, I guess to some degree, I have been looked at as a legend, but I, I, even to some degree, which I found it kind of funny, it's like I was looked at as an employer. I mean, like a chunk chill out would say, yo, <laughs> thanks, Flash, <laughs> I got a job, kid. <laughs> you know, I ain't got to do nothing else, I got a job. So I was an employer for my era, you know? The transforming thing, which I think was the next era, I guess I'd be interested to know who was an employer in that era. I mean, as far as transform is concerned, first person I heard do that, it's like a, a cross between, I guess, Cutmaster DC and Jazzy Jeff. And uh, which is which is face did it? Also in Philly. Who's up? Cash Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I kind of like heard it from. You know, my whole thing as far as like DJing, the thing that I, I kind of invented was like breaking up words, you know, like into syllables. But as far as like all the transforming stuff, that was like that's mind blowing. I'm known for turntablism. And what turntablism is, is creating sounds in a rhythmic form on turntables. Uh, one of my creations was the uh, Transformer Scratch. Uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the, uh, the old cartoon Transformers, but I used to make the record sound like Optimus Prime. And what that is, I would take the, uh, the record in a back forward, backward and forward motion and cut the sound with the uh, crossfader so it would sound uh, 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 like a transformer, like a, my man out from his prime. I would say it, it was the next step up to my style, meaning that the turntable and my physical movement were the major players to my style, but with the transforming, the fader played a major part. So if you had a, 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 a sound that you was playing, wham, the transformer was like, wah, eh, 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 it was like an intermittent, it took the sound and broke it up into little teeny tiny pieces. Breaking the, the signal up like that, I was like, oh my God, what is he doing? It is so fat, you know, then just as when I created my style of music, my style of DJing, and all the DJs had to come to my party, when I seen this transforming, I knew that what I was doing was not enough. I had to come to the next party. And the next party, um, the person I seen do it first, and I'm not saying it was the first person, second person, third person, or whatever, Jazzy Jeff. So you're not gonna settle the controversy? I don't know what the controversy is. All I know is I seen him do it, and I knew I had to figure out I mean, I knew what he was doing because of my, my knowledge of electronics. He was actually taking the crossfader and opening and closing the, 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 the signal real fast. So I knew what I had to do. Um, I then had to learn that. But it was quite incredible. Uh, that's the first person I seen do it. Uh, I, it would have to be um, Walk This Way, Aerosmith. Uh, we, I didn't even know that was the name of it. I used to call it Toys in the Attic, because that was the name of the album. Toys in the Attic, Aerosmith. My favorite break beat would have to be Let's Dance to the Drummer's Beat by Herman Kelly. I always felt that if I took the, the break of 10 records, 20 songs, like 10 records, duplicate copies, 20 records, as I say, and if I just played those particular sections in succession, one behind another, I should have the crowd going absolutely nuts, going, going, going. But when I did it, it turned into a seminar. What would you call your technical specialty? Basically just feeling with the crowd. My, 
if, if, I didn't, if I wasn't a fan of the music, I probably wouldn't have lasted this long. I know what I want to hear about party. I know how people want to feel. I know how I want to feel, and I know well, how my expectations, how my standards are. If, if, if I know I can't have a crowd up to a certain level, then I know my job ain't done. My whole thing is to make sure that these people are happy and that they calling me back to come to their town again to do their show. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of times people, um, they walk around, they, they see like see different artists or whatever. They be scared to come up and ask some questions and stuff because it's stereotype. Um, there's a lot of artists that I know personally that don't like to sign autographs or don't like to stop and talk and take pictures and stuff. And which I think is a wrong thing because nobody asked us for this. You see what I'm saying? You know, we, we wanted this, so this is a part of the uh, program. And, it, and it's a privilege for people to even think to even ask you for something like that. They don't have to ask you for that. They go to million other people to go. To. And, and they come to you, so that right there is a privilege within, within itself. So my point is, is that you know a lot of brothers that have a career, whether you're a DJ, artist, making records, produce, whatever you are, you know, take advantage of it and, and, and try to make it the best you can. Don't don't go and jeopardize your career by doing something stupid as far as shooting up your own album release parties or going to the hotels and destroying the hotels on the road. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's a lot of money in this, and so you can get a lot of things out of it. Name some of the other things, other elements of hip hop that influence you. Um, your connections with grass or breakdancing? Every element, every element. Um, I started, like I said, it, with the graffiti as, as a kid, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't bombing trains, but I was all about graffiti, tagging, you know, half be a fly, learning, you know, techniques and stuff. I got pretty nice at it, and then I moved on to the breakdancing aspect. You know what I'm saying? From there, it was like, I saw a cool hurt. In 1974, I was 14, I got in a club called the Evilo, and I saw him manipulate that crowd through the records that he played and how he played them to make them dance and do, I was like, I wanna do that. You know, so first I was the guy breaking on the floor. I wanted to be the guy that had the guys breaking on the floor, so I started DJing. You know what I'm saying? From that, every all the DJs had a mic to make announcements and stuff at parties to let people know where the next party was going to be. You know what I'm saying? Just shout people out in the crowd. And, and then he started embellishing that. You know what I'm saying? Making the little announcement rhyme so it sounds a little flashy. And then I would hear yours, and then when I do my party, I would come up with something else. You know what I'm saying? That's my phrase. And then it turned from phrases into sentences, into rhymes, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. And for all of, having touched on each of the elements of hip hop made me a better MC.